Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. Welcome to Mastering Luminar 2018. In this chapter three of Mastering Luminar 2018, we're gonna talk about filter masks. There may come a time where you want to apply a filter to a very specific part of the image. You don't want that filter to affect everything. And that's where filter masks come in. And we're gonna demonstrate it with this image here. I'm going to add some filters to this image and I'm gonna start out with my usual raw develop filters. And again, that raw develop filter, if you're not doing a raw image, it will just say develop. It won't say raw develop. So there's no confusion. And to make a little more room, I think I'm going to close my filter tab down. Now, I want to get some detail under the dock. So obviously, we're going to open up shadows. But when we're opening up shadows, you'll see that it's brightening up the entire image. And I really like the rest of the image relatively dark. I just think it looks better. The colors pop a little better. So I really can't do much with this shadow slider because of that. But I still want to show detail under this dock. So what I'm going to do is with the raw develop filter, I'm going to develop for the sky and water and kind of ignore the dock. Then I'm gonna get a different filter and use that one to give us some uh, light under that dock, so to speak. And we'll, we'll use a mask so it only affects the dock and nothing else. So I'm just going to come in here, I'm gonna bring highlights down a little bit and uh, shadows, I can't do too much with shadows because I don't want to brighten up everything else too much. Uh, let's see, I'm not gonna use the Alt method for whites. I'm just gonna eyeball it, which, which I often do. Sometimes you don't need to do that textbook setting all the time. You could just be a little more creative and just trust your eyes. So I did that. Maybe we'll add a touch of clarity. All right, so I like how the sky and water looks. Now I need to do something about this dock. So I'm gonna get another filter, and I think I'll get the AI filter, the Accent AI filter, and we'll use this one. And I'm going to boost it up a little so I get some light under the dock. Now again, when I do that, it's brightening up the entire image, including the water down here, and I really don't want that. I just want the dock to have a little light under it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add a mask to it. And it's so easy to add a mask with Luminar. For those of you that tried masking in, in uh, Photoshop, it's a lot more difficult. And I know a lot of people that just gave up because they just didn't understand how masks work in Photoshop. In Luminar, again, it's very easy. What we're gonna do is if you just hover over the filter that you wanna add the mask to, you'll see there's a couple icons over here. First of all, this eyeball icon just turns that uh, filter on or off. Right next to it is this brush. If you click on that, you'll see there's a couple different tools, including a brush, the radial mask, a gradient mask, and luminosity. In this case, we're just gonna use the regular brush. So we're gonna click on that. And now we have some tool attributes over here on the on top left. Now we're gonna paint, we're gonna go in paint mode. We'll talk more about that in the future. And right here, this little drop down are the actual brush settings. We could change the size, softness, opacity of the brush. If you're using a tablet instead of a mouse, you could adjust the pen pressure for radius or opacity. For this image here, I want to get maybe a pretty big brush, something like that is good. Uh, you could also adjust the size here with this drop down that's your mouse or your brush size and softness and opacity there as well. So you don't always have to go to that drop down if you don't want to. So we have the brush the way we like it, the size we need. What do we do? Well, watch this. Now I'm over the dock right now, and I'm just going to click once with my left mouse button. You'll see that the image turned dark. It kind of turned off this filter. Now what we do is we just paint in the effect where we want it. It's as simple as that. I mean, it couldn't be any easier. So for the sake of this video, I'm just going to go very, very quickly. Obviously, if I was really doing this image, I would 
go a lot slower and be a lot more careful. Now I want to give you a couple brush tips. First of all, we're going to get the brush the size to fit this, this stanchion right here. If you need to ever draw a straight line with a brush, click once at one end. Then go down to the other end. I'm going to go all the way down there to the reflection. Hold the shift key in and click a second time. And you'll draw a perfectly straight line, as you could see there. Now I'm going to do similarly for this one. I'll start at the bottom. I'll click once there. Go up to the top. Hold that shift key in and click a second time. And it drew there. And we'll draw it in there. We could do the same thing very quickly for these ones in the back. Click once there. Hold the shift key and click again. Click once there. Hold that shift key in. Click maybe there. And back in here. Click once. Hold that shift key in. Once shift key in. Once shift key in. It's a, just an easy way to, to draw straight lines. Now, obviously, this is a very, very sloppy job. I would trust you'd go a lot better. Now, if we want to look at that mask, see if we missed any spots. If we go over here where we have this little drop down, right next to it is a little eyeball. Click that, and you could see our mask. Now you see I missed a ton of spots, so we're going to get a larger brush. And you could come in here now and leave that on and better paint in the, uh, the mask where you want it. And if you need to remove the mask, let's say you make a mistake and you go outside the lines, you could go to the erase over here, that button there. You also could hold the Alt key in. It's Alt if you have a PC option if you have a Mac. And it will change the brush to the other brush. So right now I'm on the erase brush. If I want to start painting, I would hold that Alt key in and I could paint. Conversely, if I'm on the paint and I want to start erasing, hold that Alt key in and I'll start erasing. See? So there's a little keyboard shortcut to help you out. Now I missed a... A post back here so we'll click once there hold that shift key in click the second time I could have made my brush a better size probably but I think you get the idea we're gonna turn the mask off by clicking that eyeball again that little drop down there gives you some mask options you could change the density of the mask the feathering and things like that stuff you know that comes in handy but right now I think I have this the way I like it it looks good I want to probably add a slight vignette to finish off this image, as I often do. And I'm going to do just a little dark vignette, bring in the edges a little bit, and maybe add a little bit of an inner light, just a little bit, like that. And I'd say that this image is done. Now, one thing I probably should have talked about in the very first video is if you'd like to see a before and after of the image. This eyeball here, if you click and hold it in, there's before, let go of the left mouse button, there's after. You also have this sliding before, after. So you can see, we process that image nicely. So that's it for this chapter three. Now in the next chapter, we're gonna talk about workspaces and how that could really help your workflow. Thank you everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.